The annual commodity index rebalancing is a big deal for all commodity futures markets. This is the window of the year when the world's two largest commodity indices, the Bloomberg Commodity Index and the S&P GSCI Commodity Index announce their new weightings and then rebalance their holdings to reflect those new weightings. Index investors are huge participants in commodity markets, so this annual rebalancing balancing matters a lot for trader sentiment and for commodity market prices during that rebalancing window in early January. Today, we are going to answer four questions that are most relevant for this annual index rebalancing. Number one, who are the index investors that invest in these commodity indices? Number two, what are the differences between these two indices? Number three, how does this rebalance work? And number four, for which markets does the rebalance matter the most. So index rebalancing, let's get into it. Hi everyone, it's Dave Whitcomb from Peak Trading Research. My goal is to make commodity market concepts easier to understand, easier to analyze, and today we are tackling the annual commodity index rebalancing. Let's start with our first question. Who are the investors that invest in these commodity indices? Index investors in commodity markets are generally investors that are looking to use commodity markets as a store of value as a hedge against inflation to protect the value of their portfolios. These are often groups that have big pools of assets, for example, sovereign wealth funds or pension funds or endowments. So think of, for example, the Yale Endowment or the California Pension Fund or the Abu Dhabi Investment Authority. These are big pools of money that invest in some combination of stocks and bonds and real estate and private private equity, but there's also usually a small slice reserved for commodities. And that small slice of the overall portfolio is often invested in one of these two commodity indices, either the Bloomberg Commodity Index or the S&P GSEI Commodity Index. And index investors are massive participants in commodity market futures. We estimate that between the BCOM Commodity Index and the GSEI Commodity Index, there is is more than $200 billion in assets under management. So it goes without saying that when there's changes to these indices, when there's reweightings and rebalancing, those flows can matter a lot for commodity markets. Question number two, what's the difference between the BCOM and GSCI commodity indices? Both Bloomberg and S&P Dow Jones are both trying to accomplish the same thing with their commodity indices. They are both trying to create a diversified and representative basket of commodity futures that investors can put money into. If we look at the weightings between the two indices as a pie chart, there's one thing that jumps out to us immediately, and that is that the GSCI index is way more weighted towards energy and less weighted towards precious metals and oil seeds and softs. The reason for that is because the GSCI index is just production weighted. And guess what? There's a lot of petroleum products that are produced every year. The BCOM index, on the other hand, is production weighted, it's liquidity weighted, and generally it's just more broadly diversified. So if you are looking for an index that is a little bit more weighted towards agriculture, a little bit more weighted towards metals, you definitely want to go with the BCOM commodity index. But overall, they're both great commodity indices. They're liquid, they're easy to follow and index investors, those big pension funds and endowments and sovereign wealth funds that we talked about earlier, they invest in them both. There's about a hundred billion dollars invested in both the BCOM and GSEI commodity indices. Question number three, how does the rebalance work? In late October or early November each year, both Bloomberg and S&P announce their new index weightings that will go into effect in early 
January of the coming year. This is their way of giving index investors lots of time, almost two months to prepare for these big rebalancing flows that will happen between the fifth and ninth business days of January. And just to give an example of what those dates look like for 2022, Bloomberg announced its commodity index weightings on October 27th. S&P Dow Jones announced their weightings on November 10th. And the index rebalance will occur in January 2023 on the market closes of Monday, January 9th, Tuesday the 10th, Wednesday the 11th, Thursday the 12th and Friday the 13th. Now, not to confuse things too much, but there's actually two components to this annual rebalancing, and that is the index reweighting and the index rebalancing. The index reweighting reflects the new weights that are announced in October or November, that mix between energy markets and precious metals and agriculture futures. And the index rebalancing reflects the fact that during the year, some markets will have performed way differently than others. For example, in 2022, nickel outperformed and returned 43%, whereas Arabica coffee underperformed and lost 26%. So during that rebalancing window in early January 2023, investors are going to have to sell nickel that's performed well and buy Arabica coffee that's performed poorly. So again, to keep it simple, during that early January window, there's both reweighting flows to reflect the new weights announced by both index and there's rebalancing flows to reflect the relative performance of each commodity market. Now, the final and most important question for which commodity market does the index rebalance matter the most? I'm going to answer that question by bringing up the two reasons that traders say the index rebalance doesn't matter and then the two reasons that traders say the index rebalance does matter. The first reason that traders say this annual index rebalance doesn't really matter is because it's known ahead of time, right? It's well communicated. It's well telegraphed. Bloomberg and S&P are announcing in October, early November, these weights for January, right? They're announcing their weights two months ahead of time, that gives the market a lot of time to see what's coming down the pipeline. The second reason why traders say that the annual index rebalance doesn't matter a whole lot for markets is because of the new types of orders that are available to market participants. There's trade at settlement orders, sometimes called TAS orders. There's market on close. There's TWAPs. There's VWAPs. There's a lot of different ways that investors can get a significant amount of volume executed right at the market close when the index rebalance happens. So unlike say 20 years ago when you had to call the pit and get an order executed and everyone's buying at the same time, you now have a lot of different orders available to really mitigate that market impact. Now on to the two reasons why the annual commodity index rebalance does matter for commodity markets. Number one is that these are big market flows. So for markets where maybe there's not a liquid trade at settlement option or where these flows represent a big percentage of open interest or trading volume, these flows can matter a lot. And the second reason why these index rebalance flows matter is just market sentiment. If you are a trader in a market like coffee or cotton or cattle, and you know that one of the biggest market participants in your market is going to be buying or selling a significant amount of contracts during that early January window, that's going to influence how you think about trading that market. For example, I might not want to be short coffee futures knowing that index investors are going to be buying 5,000 contracts of coffee futures on the market close between January 6th and January 12th. And that helps answer our question from earlier for which market does the rebound balance matter most? And the answer to that is it really matters for markets for which the index rebalance is a significant percentage of either volume or open interest. Now at Peak Trading Research, we send our clients weekly updates with our 
estimates of the markets that are most vulnerable to those big index rebalancing, buying or selling inflows. Our clients are index funds, hedge funds, family offices, private traders, and many of the largest commercial trading houses in the world. If you'd like a trial of our research, you can reach out anytime, insight at peaktradingresearch.com. I hope that this video helps you think about how you can quantify and anticipate those big index rebalancing flows every year. Good luck managing your risk around those flows and we'll see you soon.